yes, I, I can remember going to loads of gigs and stuff like that. And, I, and I, I, the, the first time I saw Revenue of the Makers on the biggest stage possible were supporting Oasis at Eaton Park. Yeah. First time I heard French Kiss and the yeah. Mons coming out from first song yeah, album. Okay. I thought, fucking hell, here we go. Yeah. This is a belt. So, what are them big gigs at Eaton Park like? You know, amazing what, man. Yeah. What's like the build up and the and the vibe and that kind of stuff. I think Oasis. I mean, we've done like, we've done like Nebworth with Chili Peppers and stuff yeah. like that. But Oasis were important to me because you know I'm of the generation as you are. That yeah. that was my jumping off point. Yeah. Right? Oasis were what got me, and then through Oasis I found Stone Roses, yeah. and through Stone Roses I found the Birds and Sly and the Family Stone. And you trace music back, yeah. don't you? And I fucking hate it. You know, you hear musicians, they don't have interviews like, yeah, I love the Velvet Underground. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know you like, might. All right, I'll fucking do an all, mate, but I, didn't, I liked Oasis first. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like embarrassed to admit that they like Oasis. Yeah, why would you? Them yeah. songs are timeless, aren't yeah. they? And so to support them, you know, who were me heroes at 14, yeah. 50, I used to listen to Shabba Me and shit like that. <laughs> and then I found, like, you know, Oasis and it changed my life, really. So to yeah. support them were a dream come true, really. And to have Noel be a fan at band like he is, one of the greatest things I've done is I did Justice Tour and I yeah. ended up singing Joe Strummer's bits on a few at Clash songs with Mick yeah. Jones and you, you know what, things like you have to pinch yourself because yeah, you're yeah. fucking hell, like, I don't, if you'd, if you'd offered me that ten years ago, I'd have snapped your hand yeah. off. And we'd done it uh, supporting Roses at Eaton Park, they were oh, us, yeah. Justice Band, Wheelers and then Roses, oh. which are like basically my all my favourite bands. Did they speak to you all backstage and that? Are yeah. they like a communal area or yeah. just some of them just like keep themselves to themselves and that kind of stuff? Vast majority of me heroes I've met, Ian Brown, lovely, I had a spliff with him a few times, yeah. supported him a bunch of times, he like defended me and enemy and that. Yeah. And most of me heroes I've met, musical and footballing, have been sound, you know, there's only odd one. Yeah. Shall I be honest? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Richard Ashcroft, right? No. Mate, I fucking love the verb, right? <laughs> Northern Soul, yeah. when I've split up my first girlfriend, it was like soundtrack fucking to me, yeah, heartbreak, yeah. you know what I mean? It meant everything to me. And so we've done a gig well, with I, him. I didn't see that one coming, I had him down as a nice guy. Well, I've done a, bit done a gig with him, right? Yeah. And rest at band have come in our dressing room, Nick McCabe, who's one of my guitar heroes, all rest at band, fucking brilliant, right? Sound as a pound. Ashcroft's got his own dressing room. Uh, He's got dyed blonde hair at the time, meets him, he were perfectly civil, I thought, all right, well, yeah. Why is he not getting on with the rest of his lads? They're playing Bittersweet Symphony last tune, yeah? yeah. And he's in a people carrier with his missus on way home, and they're still playing tune. Oh, fucking and hell. I'm thinking, fuck off. That's man. never so, right. No, he, he was only one, I think, who's like <laughs> slightly put me apart a bit. But this is. You, you made a massive comeback, it just from my personal music yeah. reference, when you, when you released Mirrors last yeah. year. And you've got a new one coming out and yeah. right. so we'll put a link to you to, to buy the to preview the album and nice one, uh, on this link and that kind of stuff because I was listening to Too Tough to Die yeah fucking yeah on man. it again it's, it's it's got the same vibe as what Mirrors had last year and I yeah. really enjoyed that yeah. journey I think basically I've cut I've, I've I've stopped taking ecstasy and I'm is that what 32 were all about the album 32 32 shit man <laughs> but it's, it's like that 32 is like me yeah. Still trying to be in my twenties and fucking be a right, raver yeah. and that and good at cabal and all that. Right, okay. And realistically, I'm in my mid thirties and I'm too old to take excess. Yeah, yeah. Right. Don't be wrong. If somebody offered me one at yeah. right occasion, I'd neck it. Yeah. Of course I would. Right. Because I love it. But <laughs> I'm too old to take yeah. things like that on a regular basis. Yeah. And I'm too old for dance music. So I went back to guitars, yeah. which I've not really been on since French Kissing the I Chaos. imagine Rest at Band being more on that wavelength. Did they enjoy the 32 yeah. years? No, Ed, Ed, who, let's be honest, he's my partner in crime yeah. and Revenant Makers. Hi, Ed. He's not a druggie, yeah. right? I mean, don't wrong, he used to mess about with mushrooms and that back in the day, <laughs> but he's not a druggie, right? Yeah. So, he was never comfortable with dance music thing. Right. And when we did Baseline and MDMA amazing and all that shit, yeah. he was never, even like, to be, uh, to a certain degree first album he weren't ever comfortable with that dance music side of it yeah. whereas Mirrors yeah. French Kiss that's our home territory yeah, for him yeah. so he's better than ever Yeah, you know what I mean he's like coming to his own in lots of ways so yeah it's interesting and then Death of a King this new one we've been in Thailand doing it and it's a lot more of a band thing and it was a bit moody you know because yeah. King died while we were there that's got, where the title comes from, isn't it? Yeah, yeah from, and I, I got nicked because I had no helmet on, so I got banged up on me, <laughs> which would have been a bit of a In the Thai on. prison? Yeah, fucking me. What goes on in Thai oh prisons then? What's it really God. like? You know, they all sniff this like weird 
thing. They've all got like these tissues and they're all like okay. off the head, like on yeah. whatever, like spice or something. They're yeah. fucking mashed up on it. <laughs> but no, you listen, you don't want to get locked up in time. It's not a good scene. And also, my missus had just found out she was, Laura just found out she was pregnant, right? Oh, right, okay. While well, you're out there? No, oh. before, she went to be, oh, we were all taking his kids and all that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Laura can't come because they had that Zika virus and oh god right can okay. mash it up if you're yeah, pregnant yeah. right so yeah, I was like on my own there were only our Chris come out like from my yeah. people Eddie had his family Dave that's Anderson producer had his family yeah. you know they were, I was were kind of Ryan had his wife then yeah. I was just on my own so like obviously I was getting stuck in and going a bit mad on that <laughs> like so I think you can hear it in music and I think yeah. I feel dead proud of what we've done I really do so you've reached a certain level in your career but you're still work harder than any established musician I, I know. For example, before Mirrors come out, you were still doing house gigs and yeah. getting people to, yeah. to buy a few pre-orders for you to do like little house gigs and getting them aye. sales up and aye. grafting still really, even though you've, you're have you established. Listen, know, I've got a graft, I've got a graft, because if I rest on my laurels, look at all bands, who, I mean, take monkeys out of it, right? Yeah. But look at all bands who come out same time as me, Yeah, gone. Yeah. gone aren't they there's so many of them just yeah. gone and I think unless I graft unless I work hard unless I try and make interesting records yeah. podcasts next year I'm doing a film I can't say what it is but it oh, involves nice. travelling and I, I'm making like Carl this... Pilkinson type of thing <laughs> a bit but like fucking bit more off its head than that <laughs> alright yeah, like, but I've got funding to do it and we're going to do it in like late March it's, some, it's a passion yeah. project that's about Sheffield but yeah. about travelling and all Quality. and I've wanted to do it for, but I think unless you try and stay interested and try yeah. and do you know new stuff what I don't want to do is keep trying to make state like a shitter version of state of things for the rest yeah. of my life because yeah, yeah. there's no joy in that is the, it's soulless isn't it you know what I mean what kind of tips would you give a young John McClough oh fucking like, hell John McClough from 15 years ago what were the old, older I'd say, one I'd say one. don't be a wanker for a start have you been a wanker? I've been a right wanker. Have yeah. You? Don't don't take class A drugs and try and talk about politics <laughs> on, on air on BBC. Oh, just <laughs> all over. Like, just stop being a bell end. Think <laughs> right. about you. I mean, politics are still the same, but yeah. think about them, articulate them clearly. Yeah. You know, don't slag off people who've supported you. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I've, I've made every mistake going, man. I could honestly I could write a book on it. I've fucked it up so many times. <laughs> That band came to an end, really, after yeah. the second album. It took, took a, two years between them albums. Yeah. And I was just a fucking mess, man. I was living in London in this flat at one point. Yeah. And fucking, we were doing that many drugs. My mum and dad had to come down. I was in my pants, just fucking crying. <laughs> crying in my pants, like, I want to go home. And I just think, like, you know, I've made a, I've made a mess, man. Yeah. I, all them cliches that yeah, you said yeah, to yourself yeah. when you start in a band. You, yeah. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to take coke. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. And I did them all. I did them all, you know, like, going with, like, Shagging wrong women who like, you know, I had a girlfriend at the time and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Just awful, awful <laughs> shit. But listen, I ain't done all that bad. And I'm yeah, alright. Yeah, I'm in one uh, piece. I've got a lovely wife now, yeah, I've got two yeah. kids. It's turned out well for me, yeah. as it turns out, so I can't grumble. What's it like introducing Jeremy Corbyn to the stage? An honour. A real <laughs> honour. I love that. I saw it next day. We were in Tranmere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, that, what's thought. mad about that is that that chan. I know what it were, I know some of Scouts lefties from doing Justice Campaign. Yeah. And we had that single that got to number one and yeah, all that. Yeah. And I know a lot of them, like, you know, lefty Scouts people yeah. who are good hearted, brilliant campaigners. Yeah. And old Sheila, who were like a big leading light of that campaign, she gave me wink that Corbyn were coming. Yeah. And I says, get up, like, but what's mental is that that, that chant, what really, st I mean, I'd heard it a few times at our gigs yeah. and some at Liverpool fans say what happening at some of their matches that I think it's the same group of lads yeah, to be yeah, honest who are doing it yeah. but it really come, stemmed from that Tranmere gig that Corbyn yeah. chant and it's just took over the world hasn't it yeah, it's it really great. has you know be, it's, be, it's bigger than me or even Corbyn or Labour it's and it, I, think, I think it's great that he's carried on doing it even though you know he's not the Prime Minister but he's still he's going to be in it if he carries yeah. on like getting the, the youth of the, the uh, UK engaged and I love him I love him <laughs> I think he's he's I mean, I'm 36 year old this this year, and we've yeah. never had a left wing government. Yeah. I mean, Blair weren't left wing, and Labour were brown. You know, Corbyn's a genuine progressive, a socialist. Yeah. And I've, you know, I'm a Sheffield lad up with the Socialist Republic of South Yorkshire and all that. Yeah. He's what I want for this country, and yeah. I've got two little boys. He's he's the leader I want. Yeah. For a country that they're going to grow up in, you know. Yeah. Because this shower are ruined now, the, the heartless, merciless bastards, man, you know. It, it's I, the lies, isn't it? Even that they've got no money left, but now they've just chucked up one and a half billion at that other uh, shower issue. Yeah, yeah. And I just think, like, a change is coming, because 
I heard a stat of a day, you know, 1983, Tories yeah. had a nine point lead amongst 18 to 24 year olds. Yeah. This election amongst 18 to 24 year olds, a 47 point wow. lead to Labour. So undoubtedly, the world it's is working, changing, it? right? Yeah, so yeah. it's exciting and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have played even a small part in it, you know? Yeah. So absolute pleasure to have you down in the car and have a little drive around yeah. Sheffield today, John. Really yeah. appreciate it, mate. Top man. We're going to put a big link to pre-order the new album coming out what's it called again John just tell us a little it's bit about called, it it's uh, called Death of a King and uh, you can get it from all good retailers nice one pre-order now cheers guys make a good road trip thanks again John have a good night nice cheers Bob